Here's a question. What are the pre-imperial Roman borders? If your answer to that question was, what do you mean, you're already ahead of the class. Imperator Rome is a game that's all in the name. Or is it? More on that later. Imperator Rome is a game by Paradox Interactive that spans from 304 BCE to 27 BCE, more or less centered on the rise of Rome, going from regional force to Mare Nostrum, and from Republic to Empire. The game's mechanics are somewhere between Victoria II and Europa Universalis IV, in that it centers more on internal conflict and demographics than EU IV, but more on world domination than Vicky II. The historical concept we'll be diving into isn't so much a tricky one as it is one that doesn't have a definitive term. I'll be sticking with either time dilation or time compression, depending on which one is applicable. For an example of each, time dilation is something like imagining Sinatra singing in the 1920s, blurring together the entire era where men wore fedoras. Time compression is an adjacent problem, and more the focus of the video. It's when you look at something as vast as the history of Rome and neglect to recognize how far apart events are, relevant to each other and to the literal passage of time. An example would be conflating the expansion of Roman citizenship via the Edict of Caracalla in 212 CE with the collapse of Rome, as though there weren't 200 years between the two events. We'll explore the twin issues of compression and dilation via a couple questions raised when playing Imperator. As a quick note, I'll be looking at Imperator Rome post Marius update. I remember what this game was like at launch about as well as I remember my 7th birthday. And the game today sees about as much support as I did by my 8th birthday. Hello darkness, my old friend. Let's start with how Imperator and other games of the genre choose to confine their gameplay. On some level, era-confined games have a universal problem. The game is modeling a segment of history, and every segment of history is gradual, transitory, which leads to mechanics on the far ends of the game often feeling neglected or thin. EU4 was not really designed to handle the details of evolving combat technology. Crusader Kings would have had a nightmarish time basically inventing naval combat partway through the game. When we define the boundary of a game, sometimes that means having to decide between making content that only matters for the last decade of a four century long game, or deciding that Napoleonic warfare was basically the same as the centuries before it. It can also mean timing your boundary around a tricky tech, or drastic change in the way combat would function. As an aside, Victoria II is a pretty rough era for all those things, and can't exactly model trench warfare and compensates with huge defensive boosts, rather than like swapping over to the massive lines of battalions necessary in Hearts of Iron. Some people in the time period got to learn about this transition the hard way. Hearts of Iron, in turn, despite being about the Second World War, lets its tech go as far as 1950, in a very small set of cases that mean fighter jets just barely make it into the game and timeline. But back to Imperator. What are the boundaries of this game? I laid out a date range before, but let's explore what those dates mean. For Rome's sake, the year isn't an especially notable one. Interestingly, it is the year when the Selu kids are rebuffed from entering India by Chandragupta and the birth year of Ahsoka. So maybe this game should be called a Chakravartin Bharat. For exact specifics on the year as far as the Mediterranean is concerned, I assume it's because none of the major powers are in an active war, and a tenuous truce was signed between Egypt and the Antigonids. More broadly, this time period is very clearly chosen for the power vacuum left by the death of Alexander, and to give players the sandbox of Diadochi's successor hijinks. So what's the ending? Well, this game's events peter out at 27 BCE. Like Civ, you can play past the end date, but achievements are disabled past that point. The reason for this date is pretty obvious. Any guesses? That's right, it's the death of Marcus Terentius Varro, Rome's third cutest foe. It was the final year of the Roman Republic. Octavian was elected consul for the seventh time in that year and then granted the title of Augustus. It's interesting that the game is called Imperator, but is mostly about the lead-up to the Empire, rather than, like, being the Empire, isn't it? 
put a pin in that. Now that we've got the time constraints down, it's time to look at one of the most notable components of a historical era, innovations. Normally, I would say an era is more defined by its events than by technologies and social or governmental changes that occurred within it. However, we're talking about a sandbox game where events are far less static than something like tech, laws, and innovations. So let's look at some of the innovations in tech. In particular, let's look at the modeling of the slide into Roman autocracy and the empire, and some specific Roman flavor elements. There's a short order of texts one needs in order to more or less emulate the Caesars. This is not part of the tech tree that is unique to Rome, but it very clearly emulates Roman history along with the rest of the tech. As for Roman uniques, we have stuff like the Julian calendar. Rome is clearly the leading model in this game in the same way that the West's tech progression dictates the flow of EU4, but in some ways this tree is a bit too Rome-centric and the game isn't just about Rome. Now I know the game is called Imperator Rome, but this time frame isn't one in which Rome was a hegemon. Several powers more massive than Rome exist at the start, and by the hypothetical end, Rome had yet to become the sole regional power. Despite this, Everyone from the Diadochi to Hibernia does things the way Rome does. Rome is default. For example, Judea and the rest of the world are built to be emulators of Rome regardless of the time. This is probably due to how the game's development was basically dropped and that more regions were probably going to get fleshed out and all, but the effect, while similar to the cultural defaulting of CK3, centers more on inevitability. But that's not quite right either, because the timeline isn't strict or linear. The tech is split across four groups and eight trees, and has no time gates. It's that even before Rome dominates more than the Etruscans, the Hebrews could be emulating its grain dole, or I guess inventing it first in this timeline. This enables a soup of ideas against the grain of time, and that really works in the service of time compression. Playing this game wouldn't really give you a sense of what happened when, and it's not meant to, per se. It is, after all, a sandbox full of tools to reimagine the era, but it does have that effect. Counter to this, the only advancements that actually feel relatively gated by time are, ironically, traditions. Military traditions are earned through combat experience, making them one of the modifiers that players alter through their actions and skills. Player efficacy will impact the pace of when new traditions are unlocked. But putting aside exploits, the experience gain is rather slow. Combining that with how respectively narrow the trees are, limiting the pass through them, there's fewer things to beeline to and fewer ways to speed through any of the traditions. From this, we end up with a game where one of the most consistently gated off techs is larger boats. But unlocking them is still not tied to any era. It's kind of like Stellaris in that sense, but Stellaris has the luxury of an incredibly amorphous tech because it's dealing with an entirely speculative world. Imperator does not have that same setup, neither in its history nor in its practice, and generally this isn't too bad. This is, of course, alternative history. But these histories risk losing definition the more they allow for alternatives to deviate. Balancing deviation and definition is tricky with these games, and in the case of Imperator, it's stepping into a world full of historical mishandling and on some level reinforces misconceptions. I think on a gameplay level it's pretty fun and different from EU4, but you can see what I mean. You don't really get a sense for when, in the vast time span of 300 plus years, any of these technologies or innovations happened where EU4 required everyone to learn the same Western-directed text in a static order, this game goes in the other direction. Here's a question. When did mangonels get invented slash see battlefield use? They're represented in the game by a tech at the end of an entire tree. Here's a hint. You might recognize the name of this siege engine from CK3 if you've played it. As a little game, pause the video and, without looking it up, Tell me when you think the Romans used mangonel catapults. This is a bit of a trick question. Mangonels are an ancient Chinese war machine that made its way to the Mediterranean via the Avars possibly as late as the 6th century CE. 
far closer to Crusader Kings times than the end of this game, reaching Rome amid the absolute end of the Western Roman Empire. Sometimes mangonels get conflated with your average catapult, an onager to be specific. Okay, so then what about onagers? Maybe the game conflates the two. Well, those only existed in the 4th century CE onward, nearly 300 years after the game ends, but I guess Rome had them, so they're acceptable to put into the tech tree. This is a very big dilation slash compression of the time period. The only way out of it is, if in this instance, the innovation trees are suddenly not Roman-centric. Both possibilities have their issues. We can't simply excuse it as easy to see happening like with some of the other texts and the loose time frame. Many of the texts slash innovations are societal or legal innovations, changes in word and law, matters of simply doing government differently. Some of these probably came to a vote decades before they were implemented or were theorized or written up before being taken up by a government. But mangonels are a tangible thing that only made its way to the Mediterranean so late that it is about as far from the end date as the start date is. You'd have to play Imperator Rome 2, this time we mean Empire, to get the mangonel in a realistic time. This might sound like a semantic example, but I find it emblematic of my larger point. It brings us back to the central question. What and when is this game about? Why is it called Imperator if there's no emperor for nearly all of the game? When can you become the Empire? The game ends in 27 BCE. The timeline barely, oh so barely, scratches into the real world Imperial era, if you can even argue that it does. Octavian has the reigns before the end date, but it wouldn't be until the literal final year that he has voted Augustus. You, as a player, can force similar circumstances to his and Julius's rise, but the tech and innovations don't really push beyond it. Like, you can't recreate the tetrarchy structure implemented by Diocletian or something. In a game called Imperator, there's not much imperatoring, is there? Well now we run into the final obstacle, defining Imperator. Imperator may be where we get the term emperor from, but that's not its original function. It meant a leader slash commander in a military capacity, and empire and imperial followed suit from there. In that sense, there are imperators all over the game, without empires even. Imperator isn't made exclusive to the emperor as a title until after Augustus. Following along from that, what's an imperium? Imperium is vested authority. Following the definition of Imperator as commander, if you're given an Imperium over someone, you are given command. In the Roman context, this word was used to signify the same general idea, but across a broad range of circumstances. We could compare it to the idea of authority. A writer has complete authority over the text, a publisher has authority over what gets printed. But it was also used as a degree of legal status. Imperators had Imperium, a license to get a task done by the means they saw fit. Sometimes this manifested in having a tangible object to represent said authority, like they were in summer camp and whoever had the talking stick was taking their turn telling the story and you couldn't interrupt them. The point here is that there are many contexts beyond Empire in which the term Imperator can apply. On some level, this might feel like quite a blow to the argument that Imperator Rome has misled anyone or picked a strange term to identify itself with. And it is from a position of nuance. But I think that serves the argument of this video. Imperator is now a blur just like Rome with time compression. You say Rome and Imperator in the same sentence, and I'd bet 7 times out of 10 you'll have someone think you're just trying to sound fancy saying Roman Empire. So we come, finally, to the question from the start. What is pre-Imperial Rome? The short answer is anything before 27 BCE, anything within the range of the game. The longer and arguably semantic answer is that it depends on what you mean by Imperial. Are you saying pre-Augustus, pre-Emperor, pre-Empire? It might sound paradoxical, but in some sense, the Republic was an empire. 
If someone bought this game based on the title and was like, wait, why does it end before the Empire? I wanted to be Augustus. I think even the most semantic of Romanophiles would concede that that's a fair question. To the day before the game's support was dropped, you still had posts casually presuming when they push back the end date, despite our only model for date range changes through DLC being the Crusader Kings series going further back in time, not forward. The point is that the term Imperator carries with it certain connotations and understood meanings. As an aside, Imperator was the Latin language term the Byzantines used for their emperors, alongside their native Greek, Baselius. And while there's a whole long story I won't get into here about the Eastern Roman Empire and its nature as a true Rome, and what Byzantine even means, I do have a video in the works that's exploring that. Imperator Rome is itself fun and fascinating, and in fact, touches upon some of the issues I brought up in the social history videos. It, as a game, manages to turn things like civil war and cultural conflict and integration into real long-term problems that have to be addressed with more than a click of a single button. My concerns about the game are mostly localized to the issue of time compression and dilation. Imperator both is and isn't what it says. We're left with a few ways to understand the name of the game, as it were. I don't think the creators of the game were ignorant of the history they stepped into, nor do I think they willfully ignored history for the sake of gameplay. However, the structure of the game and its tech system inadvertently play right into historical time dilation and compression. The game ends up in this weird space of being both very off-rails and very on-rails. Rome's conquests are dictated by missions, in part but the timeline and order are loose. The texts may be reached in any number of beelines with no year slash era based gates, but they also have semi-sensical prerequisites and there are limits beyond just possibility. Rome was arguably an empire according to our modern use of the word, and engaged in what we might today define as imperialism even amid the Republic period. But using those terms in that way risks tapping into one of my favorite methods of bad history, as exemplified by Michael Rostovzev. He's somewhat famous within the general historiography for using terms where they don't apply, anachronistically. His most notable contribution, if we can call it that, was poorly applying terms like proletariat to ancient Rome. And while proletari were a social class of sorts, He's conflating the two based more on name than practical reality, or, at worst, trying to actively advance his worldview. He's also going to be one of the main focuses of the next video on bad history. Maybe stick around to catch that one and learn about some of the worst offenders in the history of, uh, history and their impacts. If you can't wait for more content, there's more than half a series before this one you could check out. Or another video I made. Maybe check out a better channel than mine. I hear cakes that look like things are making a comeback again. Alia Yakta Est.